Welcome to this Developer Skill Sprint. I'm David I, Chief Evangelist for Embarcadero, and today we're going to talk about spelunking Bluetooth LE devices. This topic came at the request of multiple developers and also a conversation between Jim McKeith and I about what it took for us to figure out how to talk to different types of Bluetooth LE devices, in particular, how to get the weight out of a digital scale that we had. This skill sprint works with Windows 8.x and 10.0, which support Bluetooth LE. OS 10, if your Macintosh hardware supports Bluetooth LE or Bluetooth 4, Android and iOS, and you can use it with Delphi Object Pascal and C++ Builder C++. We're going to do a quick overview of some of the aspects of Bluetooth LE, Bluetooth devices, and then we're going to go right into demonstrating how to explore uh, the different values and interfaces of these Bluetooth devices. And we'll end with some learning resources and Q&A. Bluetooth Low Energy, or Smart Bluetooth, is an environment for devices and a way that you can discover these devices, their services, and their characteristics. The standard Bluetooth 4.0 supports standard and non-standard profiles. And as I talked about previously, the support for the different platforms, here's the platform support for Bluetooth Low Energy. We have a system Bluetooth unit and a component you can use called T-Bluetooth LE. Now, at the core of the standards documents for Bluetooth LE, there's something called the GAT, or Generic Attribute Profile. And this, the GAT provides high-level definitions of different profiles, the services, which are a collection of characteristics, and relationships to other services. You'll see that in the demonstration. And also characteristics, which define attribute types that contain a single value. And you can find more information on the Bluetooth.org site in the developer section. Bluetooth devices can come in both Bluetooth Smart and Bluetooth Smart Ready. And I know it might be a little confusing because they're almost the same. The Smart Ready devices are the PCs, the tablets, the phones, and other hardware devices that can talk to and connect you and get data from or send data to the Bluetooth smart devices. There's a search engine on the Bluetooth site that allows you to look for devices, manufacturers that support the Bluetooth standards. In this case, this link, which is a search engine for Bluetooth devices, click on the advanced search link under the buttons and then if you're looking for devices, put in the name of the vendor or the name of the device and include uh, RH, PHY, and GAT in the layers edit box. And that'll give you the devices that you might be looking for. For example, uh, a heart rate monitor, a glucose blood sugar measurement device, uh, a digital scale, and others. So let's get right into the demonstration. For the demonstration, I'm going to use uh, a Delphi and C++ example that ship with Rad Studio 10 Seattle. Uh, it's the Explorer Devices LE application. It runs on Windows if you have a Bluetooth uh, LE or Bluetooth 4 dongle or hardware and you're running Windows 8 or Windows 10. It'll run on OS 10 if you've got the hardware and the operating system version that I mentioned. And it'll run on Android and iOS. I'm going to run this example on OS 10. Let's take a look at it in action, then we'll come back and look at the source code. So I've got uh, the Delphi version here and the C++ version there, the user interface, uh, exactly the same. I'll set the target platform to OS 10, and let's go and run the application. So over here on my Macintosh screen, we've got a user interface, this button to find devices, and then we'll list the devices and be able to select them. And this will show us the current device. We can get the services that are provided and we can get the characteristics that are available for each of the services. And then if we want to, we can look at the values that are associated with the characteristics. So let's go and find some devices. 
And here I'm using the Bluetooth LE Discovery that's part of the Bluetooth Runtime unit. And then when it's done, it'll change the label at the top, telling me how many devices it found. You can set a timeout. I've set it to, I think, 15 seconds if you've got lots of devices. So we found two. Uh, one of them is some unknown device that doesn't uh, echo back its name. But the one I'm looking for is the Wahoo Scale version 1.3. So we'll select that one. Next, we can go and say, let's get the services. Let's see what this device can do or better yet as a programmer, what I can do with those devices. And it gives us the different services that are available and underneath those services, then we'll get characteristics that are associated with them. For example, if we wanna see the manufacturer name string, we can go and get that value and it says this Wahoo Fitness and we echo it in, in several different uh, formats. Now down here are the attributes that are associated with each of the characteristics uh, inside of a service. Uh, can you read? Can you write to it? Is it going to broadcast information? Is, is, can it be set up to notify you as it's getting data? Can it indicate, for example, maybe indicate a low battery level? Uh, those kinds of things. And there's some other properties that are available for operations as well. So battery level, for example, let's go and look at that value. Uh, it's 100% because I put new batteries inside of it. If we're GAT standard where we adhere to the specifications from Bluetooth, then the names will already be known and we'll find those names. But in some cases, there are custom services and custom characteristics as well. In the case of this Wahoo Fitness Scale, there was one here. Uh, this is a GUID for it. So I modified the sample program to output the GUID versus the name that I get from the interface. And this 1901, it turns out that is associated with the weight, getting the weight. And Jim and I found that 1901 device for this Wahoo Fitness Scale. And the 2B01 for getting the weight that comes from the scale. So what I'm gonna do is go and, uh, and get the weight. So let's, uh, I'll step on the scale, at least partially, and we'll go and, uh, and look at the value. Now notice it's a notify, so we can subscribe to the notification and get values. And you'll see the value. In this case, I'm showing it in hex. And if I step off and step on the scale, you'll see until it stabilizes that I'm getting data. Now the challenge here was trying to figure out what is this device returning to us? And after a while, we realized the good news was the scale has an LCD uh, display on it. And, I, and I'm displaying it in pounds and or kilograms. And Jim figured out, well, okay, well, it looks like the, uh, the bytes and it's in hectograms. So we knew to, to multiply by a factor to get the actual decimal place in the proper position to get the pounds. Now in this Bluetooth device explorer, we're just gonna dump out hex and other values uh, because we're not sure what these different services and characteristics are going to deliver. So here's the battery service, for example, the level. Now, usually it looks like that's going to be a percentage, for example, in battery level. We can look at the, the revision string, and that was 1.3 and such. Now let's go look at the source code under the covers. So first thing, find devices. What does it do? Uh, well, I go in here and I disable the button while I'm finding it until I'm done, for example. And then I say, okay, let's get the current Bluetooth LE manager. Let's set the on discovery end event handler for the manager LE. And that we're going to point that to devices discovery LE end. And then we'll call start discovery. And the parameter here is the amount of time for discovery. And depending on how many devices you have or how long it takes to go out and look for the different devices, you'll want to set a uh, timeout longer than just a few seconds. Uh, if I had this as about three seconds, sometimes it was only finding one of my devices. So I set it to 15 seconds and, uh, and then the devices showed up and I could get to them. Now let's go and see what happens, what we wanna do at discovery end. So at discovery end, we'll say, okay, how many devices did we get? The parameter here is is the uh, number is the number of is the devices that are found, and we'll say what's the count of devices. 
and then we'll iterate through the count to get the device names uh, in that combo box. And then when we're done, we'll re-enable the uh, find if we want to try and find again, for example. Going back, there's a button here called Get Services. So let's see what that does. It says for the current device that we selected from the combo box, let's go and discover services. So we call the discover services method. And then before that, we've set a on services discovered event handler called services discovered. Let's go and see what we do there. And it's doing what you would expect. It's going to go through the number of services that are found and it's going to populate the tree item in, uh, in the user interface with either the name of the service, but if the name is, is null, it's a specialized service, then we're just going to call do it to string and take the UUID from the service list and dump it out. You saw that uh, with that uh, non-standard service, the 1901 as part of the GUID. And then we'll go through for that service we'll go and find all the characteristics and see what characteristics and properties are associated with that service and characteristic and populate the tree with those. So is it a, is it a broadcast? Is it an extended property? Does it notify you what it has updates and indicator? Can we read and write from it and so on? And then we'll add that to the tree view, right? There's a couple other buttons here. One is, uh, can we get all values? So get all values is just gonna go through for the current device, and it's gonna go and set the event handler on characteristic red, and we're gonna call, did we read a characteristic from the list? And we're gonna go through each one of those and display their properties. So this code, if we go and find the declaration, is just going to say, if the characteristic that we're looking for then we'll just call refresh current characteristic. And if we go and find that declaration, we're going to go and say, OK, uh, for that characteristic, what is it? And then if it's, a, if it's a read value, then we'll dump out all the different types that we might want to look at. Is it a string and so on? We could have queried further to see if it's a standard service and what its uh, attribute is. OK, a characteristic. Has a, has a name, it has a good, and it has a specific value and type to be read. Now in this case, I, I'm saying if it's, if it's a notify or indicate, I'm just gonna dump out hex. And same thing on the C++ side, find devices, we'll go in here and we'll set on discovery end to discovery end, we'll start discovery and so on. And then on the C++ side, we'll call the get services, which will go through for the specific device and call discover services. And then the event handler will uh, will say, okay, for all the services that we discovered on the C++ side, we'll go and read through the services. If the service doesn't have a name, then we'll dump out the GUID to string. Uh, if it does have a name, we'll just dump out the UUID name of that service that we got from the device uh, interface. And again, over here, we can subscribe to things that are notify or indicate. So we'll go over and say, if the, uh, the characteristic has a property that contains DT Bluetooth property notify or T Bluetooth property indicate, then we'll set the characteristic notification and subscribe to the updates. Otherwise we'll say it doesn't have uh, something you can subscribe to. And the same thing over here on the on the Delphi side, we can go and say, if the Bluetooth property is notify or indicate, then we'll set the characteristic notification to true for that characteristic. And we'll start getting the values, which you saw before as I was stepping on and off the scale, you saw the values changing for the notify property, which was the uh, weight that was associated with it. Now, I just wanted to come back real quickly to the Bluetooth Device Explorer and mention one more thing again about devices, device profiles, services, and characteristics. Even though this Wahoo Scale has a custom service and a custom characteristic associated with it, it's still using a standard characteristic format to get the bytes for the weight on the scale. 
The rest of these are standard services. So a, a Bluetooth LE device can be made up of one or more services that have one or more characteristics. And they could even have and support some standard GAT profile services and characteristics. For example, serial number string, battery level, the battery service. Those are standard across a whole range of devices. And if you go to the Bluetooth org site, look at the GAT specification, profiles, services, and characteristics, you'll see that. But manufacturers are always allowed to go and create their own custom services and their own custom characteristics if they choose to. They can also do a mix of a custom service with a standard characteristic, for example. The Bluetooth LE component was actually introduced in XC7. In XC8, we added a regular Bluetooth component as well. Anyway, so we're going to show you a little bit with the Bluetooth LE component. What we've done is we've created an application to talk to the uh, Wahoo uh, Bluetooth scale. So it's a bathroom scale. They do, so they, it's Bluetooth LE, which is our Bluetooth smart. One thing about the scale is it does not publish. They don't give you, tell you how to access the profile. They don't tell you what the interface is for it. So David and I and myself actually used a, uh, uh, a Bluetooth Explorer to go through and spelunk the scale. And so we first of all scanned for all the Bluetooth devices, found this, oh, look, here's the scale. And then go into it and you say, what are, what does this scale publish? And, oh, this is what the scale publishes. And so we just, we found the scale and we saw, you know, the services it provides. Well, we'll subscribe to that one. And sure enough, when you push down the scale, the numbers start changing. So we figured out what those numbers were, how to get to them. Turned out it was in uh, hectograms, which was not a weight at measurement I was completely familiar with, but it noticed it was not pounds, but it was kilograms, but the decimal point is in the wrong spot. So once we figured out the conversion from hectograms to pounds, we were able to get this to work. So, so you put down the Bluetooth LE component and you enable it. Okay, and so this is just enables it to talk to uh, Bluetooth devices. Um, we have one event handler, we have two event handlers here, but I'll show you how those work in a little bit. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna connect to our device. So up here at the top, we actually have a couple uh, uh, GUID constants. And so we figured out what these were um, using the Explorer. So the device, this is the, the GUID for the device. This is the GUID for the service that we wanna to subscribe to. So it has multiple services. And this is the service that we were looking for, for the weight service. And then that service has multiple characteristics. And this is the characteristic of the weight that we're looking for. So now we come in here and we say we want to discover devices. And so this is the timeout. And this, this is the device we're looking for. This can be an array of devices. So maybe they call it the new Wahoo scale that has a different device ID. So you can put that here and have multiple devices you're looking for. In this, so there's an event that fires on the Bluetooth component in the discover devices. So when I call discover after 3.5 seconds, this occurs, the in discover devices. And in here, we come through and we find the, we go through discovered devices. So we, we say, okay, we have more than one device. So we assume the first device is the scale. Um, since we are looking for this particular GUID, if we found 10 devices, all of them would have to be the scales. So we're just assuming we only found one scale. If we found other scales, we're just ignoring those. So in here we come in and say we we're gonna get the service of that device. So right here, this is the uh, device we found and we get the services for that device. If we get none, then we say, hey, we didn't find anything. We just put a message there. Uh, otherwise, we say, oh, we found the scale. Specify the uh, the value for that, for the, the count that we found of services. And so then we call get services characteristics. And so this is a routine here that David wrote that goes through and gets the characteristics of that service. And so we're looking for the weight service. And then we go through that service and we look to see what information it has as far as the, the UID of it. And let's see, right here, we're getting the characteristics. And one of those is the, uh, the weight measurement characteristic. 
So we grab the right measurement characteristic, and then we're also putting in here, we're subscribing that characteristic. So this is the key right here. Once you get the service, then get the characteristic for the service, do you subscribe to that characteristic? And then once we've done that, then on our Bluetooth component, we have an event occurs here that's called uh, on characteristic read. So when that uh, characteristic is updated, so when someone steps on the scale, now if you ever stepped on a bathroom scale before, you know that the numbers uh, start moving and you see the numbers changing over time as it, you know, as you step down on it, the weight comes on into it and you see you're reading those values. This event will fire multiple times as those numbers are changing. So here's where we did the, the hectograms conversion. We noticed the bytes on it were, uh, would indicate that the value was still changing, and then it would change to indicate that the value had got to its finest, final value. So now we're not parsing that out here. We're just ignoring the, the last byte from the characteristic we get to get the value as an integer. So you get the values of different types. You can come through as different values. You can come through as a float, as a string, et cetera. And then we're converting it to hectograms. So I'm going to show you this on Windows. Windows is a little more complicated than the other ones. First thing is you have to go into Bluetooth and pair it to the scale. So Bluetooth LE typically doesn't require pairing, but Windows does require pairing for Bluetooth LE. So I've paired it to the Wahoo scale. So it's just a matter of turning on Bluetooth. It enumerates all the devices, and then I just select the scale and hit pair. Okay, so now um, when I run my application, and I'm going to hit connect. There we go. Found the scale. Here's the service that I found, the characteristic, etc. Subscribe to weight measuring characteristic. Okay, so now if I step on the scale, and I'm not standing on it, it's on the, I'm sitting in my chair. We see that here's the events firing and the different values for the weight. Okay. And we finally stopped, it stopped firing because uh, we've come to equilibrium as far as my weight I'm putting on a scale, 50 pounds. Uh, this is in pounds, we did the conversion from hectograms. Now I'm not standing on it, it's just my feet resting on it under the table here as I'm talking to you. So there we go. That's what is involved in reading the scale. Is if I actually if I push down really hard on this, I get the value to go up, see? So there are lots of resources out there on the internet for getting information about Bluetooth LE, both in our own doc wiki, there's a high level using Bluetooth low energy, and also documentation about the system Bluetooth unit. Uh, there's a lot of information about GAT, the standard profiles, the services and the characteristics, and how those work. We ship with lots of samples. The, in the doc wiki, there's a sample for heart rate monitor. Heart rate monitors are a standard GAT device. So in my case, I use a Polar H7. Uh, there's also Zephyr and many other heart rate monitors that people wear, both on uh, in the chest, on the wrist, on the finger, on the foot, and so on. There's also a whole range of Bluetooth LE samples uh, that are available for both Delphi and for C++ Builder. You can find those in your public documents, samples folder under multi-device samples, device sensors and services, Bluetooth. On the right offer page, we have a special offer where you can upgrade from a previous professional edition to the enterprise edition and save 35%. This offer ends March 31st, so just another couple of weeks. Uh, discount provided at the time of purchase and the terms and conditions are listed there. We also have the bonus pack that's available with the Object Pascal Handbook by Marco Cantu, the premium styles for VCL and FireMonkey, and Meta Converter Basic to convert VCL applications to FireMonkey applications. Next week's Skill Sprint is refactoring legacy code to design patterns. It's on Tuesday, March 22nd, 6 a.m., 11 a.m., and 5 p.m. And just a note, the U.S. is now on summertime, except for Hawaii and parts of Arizona. So as always, make sure you understand what the local time is in your location. I think parts of Europe switch at the end of March to summertime. And that's it for this week's Skill Sprint. Now we'll take your questions. Okay, if there's any questions, go ahead and put in the question panel, but go to our software and we'll... So there are lots of resources out there on the internet for getting information about Bluetooth LE, both in our own doc wiki, 
there's a high level using Bluetooth low energy and also documentation about the system Bluetooth unit. Uh, there's a lot of information about GAT, the standard profiles, the services and the characteristics and how those work. We ship with lots of samples. The, in the doc wiki, there's a sample for heart rate monitor. Heart rate monitors are a standard GAT device. So in my case, I use a Polar H7. Uh, there's also Zephyr and many other heart rate monitors that people wear, both on uh, in the chest, on the wrist, on the finger, on the foot, and so on. There's also a whole range of Bluetooth LE samples uh, that are available for both Delphi and for C++ Builder. You can find those in your public documents samples folder under multi-device samples, device sensors and services, Bluetooth. On the Red Offer page, we have a special offer where you can upgrade from a previous professional edition to the Enterprise Edition and save 35%. This offer ends March 31st, so just another couple of weeks. Uh, discount provided at the time of purchase and the terms and conditions are listed there. We also have the bonus pack that's available with the Object Pascal Handbook by Marco Cantu, the Premium Styles for VCL and FireMonkey, and Meta Converter Basic to convert VCL applications to FireMonkey applications. Next week's Skill Sprint is refactoring legacy code to design patterns. It's on Tuesday, March 22nd, 6 a.m., 11 a.m., and 5 p.m. And just a note, the U.S. is now on summertime, except for Hawaii and parts of Arizona. So as always, make sure you understand what the local time is in your location. I think parts of Europe switch at the end of March to summertime. And that's it for this week's Skill Sprint. Now we'll take your questions. Okay, if there's any questions, go ahead and put them in the question panel on the GoToWebBrowser software and we'll get them answered for you. That's Jim McKeith and I'm David I. Hello. Hello. Uh, there was a question uh, by Guy about does the interface support notification when the device disconnects? And I mentioned two ways. There's an on disconnect device event handler that you can hook if you want to be notified that the device is no longer connected and that's both in the runtime library as well as on the T Bluetooth LE component you'll see that in the object inspector and the other way is you can query the connection state so there's a, a method there's a property just called connection state and it either has a value of connected or disconnected uh, so you can do it uh, either way if you want to do your own uh, monitoring. Uh, otherwise, you can hook the event handler. And Jim, there was a question down further about beacons, which are also Bluetooth LE uh, low-power devices with special um, advertising packet formats, at least for some of them. Uh, about he was. The developer was using estimate beacons, but he couldn't get them to work. And I think you had some estimate beacons, didn't you, Jim? Yeah, I had estimate beacons. I'm trying to remember if there's anything special with estimate beacons I had to do. I know the gimbal beacons, I had to go to their website and change them to either be iBeacon or Alt Beacon. But if it complies, and I've tried it with straight up iBeacons as well, if it complies with iBeacon or Alt Beacon standard, which most of them out there do, if not out of the box, then with a little bit of changing, then uh, you can detect them. You just have to make sure you specify the UUIDs that it uses, um, majors and minors. I guess you can leave majors or minors blank, but you have to know the UUID the beacon's using. And I've used it with estimates. I've used it with gimbals. I've used it with um, rad. I've used it with iBeacons. And all without a problem at all, just as long as you know what those uh, new ideas. Although there's the other, there's an app, there's a sample, and I can't remember what it's called, I think it's like, uh, there's one that you can run that will just tell you all the beacons that are within range um, in the sample folder. But, and I used that one actually one time, someone had a beacon, they're like, what's this? And I'm like, I don't know, let's find out. And so I ran that sample app that will scan all the beacons, and sure enough, we found it, and we found out what the UID was, and put it in the thing, and we were able to use it just fine. So, I've, yeah, I've used it with a number of different beacons, and it's not had any problems at all. You've used it for beacons both from uh, OS X, iOS, and Android, all three platforms. I have not connected to beacons from Windows 10 because... Uh, 
we didn't have or we didn't have the Windows 10 support for meetings yet. Yep. Um, there was a question about uh, Bluetooth LE support on Windows 10. As I mentioned, Windows 8 and Windows 10 do support Bluetooth LE, um, but the, re the other question is, does the hardware you're running Windows 10 or Windows 8 on uh, have Bluetooth LE or Bluetooth 4 hardware support? I have a PC at work and here and at my home office that don't have hardware built in. So I ended up purchasing, I think it was by UTECH, U-T-E-C-H. Uh, it really just, there's a broad, most, there are several of these low-priced USB dongles uh, that have Broadcom Bluetooth board chip, and you just plug the dongle into the USB port of your computer, and it, that then all of a sudden, and sometimes there's a device driver to be uh, to be installed, um, depending on the version of Windows again or the device. But uh, absolutely, Windows 8 and Windows 10 do support Bluetooth LE. Uh, I think Jim, you had it. You have a tablet. I think a Windows tablet that has Bluetooth 4 or Bluetooth LE hardware built into the tablet. Uh, again, right. since I had to plug a USB dongle that added a, a Broadcom chip Bluetooth 4 uh, hardware into my infrastructure for Windows 8 and Windows 10. Um, and the question about this, the source available for the Bluetooth Explorer application? The answer is yes. If you go to the blog, I put the link, the short, URL link in the chat window, or you can see it uh, on the screen as well. Uh, just go there and you'll see a link to Code Central, uh, which is the download for both the Delphi and the C++ version of the Bluetooth Explorer. There, I updated them to from the standard samples that ship with XZ8 in it and, uh, to display the, the GUID uh, for unnamed uh, services and unnamed characteristics that don't name themselves uh, that aren't get standard. So I, I modified it to dump out uh, good values in the tree view. Um, let's see, Windows requires pairing. Um, that just has to do with the way uh, Windows does Bluetooth, it, uh, or at least the API we're talking to. You it only can uh, enumerate Bluetooth devices that Windows pair is paired to. Bluetooth LE does require pairing, typically, but uh, in order for it to get to through the Windows API we're using, you have to have it paired with Windows. Yeah, the, I think the other thing about the uh, the pairing is on Windows, if you pair something, you're connected to it, and you'll need to disconnect to it, right? Uh, you can also connect and control other devices like the scales and so on, uh, and you can disable, but since there's there's no physic forced pairing, um, you, under code you can connect and disconnect to a device. Uh, in Windows, you have to go back into the operating system uh, control panel and unpair from the device when you're done with it because it's a it's a you know, it's a manual operation versus being done under the covers in, in code. Uh, but yeah, you can still, some, some app can take control of a device. In the case of Beacons, Bluetooth LE devices, they're just broadcasting on whatever pattern they broadcast, frequency and so on. You know, once a second, once every 10 seconds, whatever, it's based on how you want to set them up for battery consumption. Uh, there, they're just broadcasting, so there's there's no pairing involved. You, you just have code that listens for those to happen. Um, okay. Uh, on disconnect device is on the component, and on you set that event handler guy on either. It depends on if you, it's either on T Bluetooth. LE component if you're using the component or or the current device. Uh, as you saw in the sample, I, I was discovering devices and that, that gave me a device list. Uh, 
and then I would choose one of the devices that uh, um, so I get the device list and then I go iterate through to find, for example, let's say I'm looking for a scale, maybe I'm looking for a certain manufacturer and, and model or serial number of scale, uh, then that gets me the T Bluetooth device. And from there I can set the uh, event handler. So you can do it both ways, depends on if you're using the component or you're using a, a, a device instance. Oh, some Ken was saying he was at a Hilton that uh, uses Bluetooth to open the doors. I, I've seen that some hotels and others are using um, smart apps, you know, to do things like open door locks and so on. Again, there's a dis difference whether the device is blue classic Bluetooth or Bluetooth 3 versus Bluetooth 4 low energy. So, for example, uh, you might have a what is it? Kivo, I think, is a Bluetooth door lock, uh, but that may be Bluetooth LE. Um, let's see. Uh, okay. Um, is there tools around for finding uh, classic Bluetooth? Uh, you can. So that one of the things that Bluetooth LE added was this concept of advertising. Um, but I'm trying to think, I, I, any uh, your smartphone device, if you put a device into pairing mode, then you could it'll list everything it can see. So uh, yeah, it's kind of built into the most things as far as being able to pair with Bluetooth devices. It'll give you a list of all of them. Uh, but you're not going to be able to write an app that can enumerate parable devices because the OS doesn't expose those sort of APIs. It only exposes what is paired with it. So the idea of being able to connect to an unpaired device is new to LE. So yeah, you can discover classic Bluetooth devices just with your smartphone's Bluetooth section. Go in there to pair and it'll just list anything that's available for pairing, like your car or whatever. But as far as being able to enumerate those in an app, I've not seen anything that does that. We probably could buy a some sort of high-end Bluetooth scanner that can go out and find everything that's broadcasting any sort of stuff on Bluetooth frequencies and decode the data and, and read packets and stuff like that. But if that's what you're looking for, but you just need to find a Bluetooth scanner hardware for that. Yeah, there is. There definitely is hardware for, and they're not cheap for scanning for devices. Um, you might search on the internet to see if there's a software scanning tool uh, because in a sense all your computers and all your software all your smart devices uh, they themselves can behave uh, like a beacon or like a Bluetooth device uh, where you can simulate in a sense being a, a digital scale for example uh, there's a great Code Rage session uh, in Code Rage 10 about that that I link on the blog post. If you go down to the videos uh, in the at the bottom of the the blog post, you'll see links to Code Rage 10 and a deeper dive on Bluetooth LE and beacons uh, by our R and D team uh, in Spain. So uh, check that out. Um, but yeah, I've looked in there, you know. They weren't cheap. I, I saw some for a couple thousand dollars. They're, they're Bluetooth scanning devices. They have antennas, and you can roam around and, and find them. Um, for Bluetooth LE, you can roam around, and you'll find all the beacons that are around. In fact, there's in Amsterdam, over in the Netherlands, they have this area of town called the Beacon Mile, where they've placed beacons, and they give you the data sets associated with it. Pavel Glavatsky has blogged about that. Uh, the Beacon Mile, they put beacons in front of different monuments and museums and other things so that you can build apps. And people who built apps, they even had a, a hackathon, uh, I think it was last year. And 
where people had access to data sets and they were looking for developers to build cool apps. So as you're walking down the Beacon Mile, it's telling you things that are around you that you can explore. Uh, museums, there's a museum in, all, in Sydney, Australia that uses uh, beacons, but uh, that's on the beacon side. Uh, we've done demos showing heart rate monitors, temperature sensors, temperature meaning uh, human temperature. Um, there are blood sugar devices. There's a whole range of devices. Go to that link. I have it posted in, in the blog for this skill sprint um, for the kinds of devices you could search for, uh, types, names, and so on. We've got heart rate monitors. They're mostly GAT standard. There's a GAT rate standard for that. Uh, so that no matter if the device says it's Bluetooth smart and it has a logo on it, then uh, and it's a heart rate monitor by multiple vendors, then the same app that you would build that uses the standard GAT interfaces, we ship a heart rate sample uh, in XE8 and 10 Seattle. And so if you have a Bluetooth smart heart rate, uh, whether it's a chest strap, a finger monitor, a, t a toe, a foot, ear, there's several different monitors that clip on different places. Uh, chest strap is one that most athletes might use to, to monitor their heart rate. Uh, but we even uh, just stick our fingers across the two connectors. Uh, it doesn't, it's not as accurate as uh, the strap. And if you look at the GAT standard for heart rate monitors, you'll see one of the characteristics is the position of the heart rate monitor. And our sample has the enumeration of those different positions, chest, uh, foot, and so on. And so we can query the device because it's got standard to get that characteristic that has a specific UUID uh, to tell us uh, the bits that define the position. And if it's got standard, they even go down to defining the packets of bits and bytes uh, in the the advertised packet or the the data packet, however you want to look at it, for uh, the battery level, the manufacturer, the serial number, and so on. Because someone asked me one time, well, what if you're in a gym and ten people have polar H7 heart rate monitors, or they have different GAT standard heart rate monitors? Uh, how will you know? which one you're monitoring, are you monitoring your own? Uh, there you would have to know, okay, here's my manufacturer. Maybe you'd have a settings on your app where you'd put in the, you'd either discover all the devices and then choose from the list the one that matches your serial number. So if there are 10 polars, each one has a serial number, which is a characteristic, and then you could choose your serial number so that you're monitoring your heart rate uh, versus the person on a treadmill or stepper next to you. Right? In, in the sample we showed, uh, that Jim showed, uh, we just we only had one scale, uh, so we just took the first one we found, right, in in the list. So we called we chose dot first, uh, but if we had had three or four digital scales in a weighing station, for example, we might have had to uh, to choose. Um, from a list of scales, you know, maybe you put a number on them, one, two, three, or something, so it would be more visible than turning the thing over looking for the serial number. Um, so you want to use your heart rate monitor at home first so you can establish that connection to make sure you're connecting the right one, and then once you get to the gym, just ignore the rest. Yeah. Uh -huh. So guys asking about the connection event, the, the idea of devices coming in and out of range I guess you need. Hmm, I think you'd rely on the OS to tell you that it's not available. You would not get a notification that it's disconnected for a non-LE device. That we all well, we, there's we have two components, and I think we mentioned that I I, I forget. But there's a there's a T Bluetooth component for classic Bluetooth, and there's a T Bluetooth LE component. Okay, and there are managers and device classes for both LE and for classic. So there's, uh, and all of that is in system 
uh, Bluetooth. So that unit. So there's two components, and underneath there are managers uh, for those. And each of them has uh, different interfaces that you can work with. So for T Bluetooth, you can uh, discover as well, call discover, and you can end discovery. Um, but it, again, it's a different, it's a different mechanism. In Bluetooth, you're going to pair, in classic Bluetooth, you're going to pair between two apps. For example, we've, we've got demos in app tethering where we connect um, to computers via classic Bluetooth or via the network, you know, Wi-Fi, TCP, IP, or whatever. So uh, it depends on what you want to do if you want to connect to low energy devices which have different specification for the standard use T Bluetooth LE or the Bluetooth manager LE uh, Bluetooth LE manager uh, if you want to go to classic Bluetooth use T Bluetooth or T Bluetooth manager and uh, and you can have them both in the same uh, in the same application as well so there's uh, I'll just type if you want to T Bluetooth Classic and low energy. So I hope that'll answer. Again, they're they're two separate standards, um, and yeah, for Bluetooth, you need to unpair. Oh, sorry, I have to make it serve. Bluetooth Classic, you need to pair and unpair. Uh, Uh, let me look. I'm going to look, unless you're looking, Jim, to see uh, if there's something in the RTL for Bluetooth. Uh, let's see. For Bluetooth. You can check to see if is paired is set on Bluetooth Classic. Uh, you can unpair and pair. Uh, what else can I do? You can get a, uh, you can, through your Bluetooth adapter, you can get a list of paired devices. Um, I don't see an event for disconnecting, but let me look a little further. Let me go back to, okay. And again, I'm just going into the doc wiki, so I'm going to put the link in, guy. Uh, for you for uh, for both okay so there's the link for T Bluetooth and then uh, for Bluetooth LE and and again those are the components in the documentation but under under each there's also a uh, the runtime library has support the same supporting set. The component just wraps all the underlying RTL. So take a look at those two doc wiki links that I gave you for T Bluetooth and T Bluetooth LE, and then you can go from there to um, to look for um, additional information. So, for example, if it's the the current manager. Um, I'm trying to see where you can get the connection state. Uh, so for Bluetooth Classic, you can get the connection st state. Let's see if I can, but go from there and see. You, there may be uh, an event handler on the connection manager or the device manager for T Bluetooth. Okay, but there are two different standards with two different. Uh, uh, implementations under the cover and two different component wrappers. Okay. That is the the weight service. Can you get that from the Explore devices as well, or do you have to have that separately? The 
Well, Explore Devices gave us the UUID, and then we could click on that and do a subscribe to see the weight changing in the Explore Devices LE, uh, LE sample. So there isn't a standard for weight scales, if I remember correctly, Jim, for GET. Um, I'm not sure if I answered that question correctly. Jim? I was just wondering, because you said you got the, originally got the weight service UUID from that uh, forum someone posted online. Yeah, I found it. It was on a BlackBerry forum, I think. And then I, I contacted uh, Wahoo Fitness, and they pointed me to they have, like, an Xcode sample um, that they had, have available. And that also did the definition inside of it in their, in their source code, in their header file. Um, I'm not sure if they have other samples up there. I haven't looked in a long time. This was going back a year or so. But, uh, and the rest of those bits seem to always all be the same, regardless of the device. Um, it's only that first, uh, what is it, a word, I guess, that is different. And for GAT standard specification, they reserve the 1800 through 18FF for standards. And so uh, customized ones can use whatever they want from 1900 above in the first word of the uh, UUID. And it just turned out uh, we saw it. I knew it because I went to this website. But the Explore Devices LE also will display all the services and characteristics that the device has. Even if they're not named, it just it calls through the Bluetooth runtime connected to the device and returns back uh, what the device sends to it, like its name, its version number, battery level, and so on. So it originally the Explore Devices LE would not show me the UUID. Uh, it just would show in the tree view an empty or unnamed. It was modified until I updated it here in this in the zip file in the blog post uh, where I said it, it would help me better if I when I'm building an app to have it display the UUID. Uh, so that I can put that in my code. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, because it, it, as you saw in the code, when you want to do the discover, you can just put a timeout value and discover, even using the T Bluetooth LE component, you could go out and discover all the LE devices you find. So around here, uh, there's several additional Bluetooth LE devices. Uh, there's some beacons in the office here in Scotts Valley. There's an Apple TV because it's it's Bluetooth LE because you have the little remote control. That's Bluetooth LE for changing channels or you know, hitting the home button on Apple TV. So when I'm at work, a lot of devices show up if you don't, if you just say discover Bluetooth LE devices and they send their information back. But in the sample, that we showed for the Wahoo Scale app, uh, we you can pass an array of UUIDs of devices you're looking for. In my case, I just had one. I was passing uh, the UUID of the scale. If I had left that blank, I would have found a Polar H7 heart rate monitor. I would have found the scale and Apple TV and a few other things. Um, and that's different. When I'm in my home office, then I saw the scale and some other unnamed blank device. Uh, my Apple TVs were too far away to be found in the discovery, or I would have had to set the time out longer. So let's see. The question here about is it available for all supported operating systems of Delphi? So I put that slide up, and you can get that from the doc wiki as well. Um, Bluetooth LE, it really depends both on the operating system and the hardware. So for OS X, uh, it's supported on version, oh shoot, now I've got to go find that here. I'll, uh, let me bring that up again. If you go to the using Bluetooth LE, it's the first link on my blog post. Uh, I pull, I point to the doc wiki. So, um, 
On Windows, it's Windows 8 and above. So Windows 8, Windows 10, right? 8, 0, 8, 1, 8, and 10. Jim showed on Windows, you have to pair the Bluetooth device. Uh, on other platforms, you don't have to uh, do any pairing. You can just connect to them. You can discover them and connect to them. In Bluetooth and Windows, you have to go to your device manager, and then there's a Bluetooth choice in Bluetooth, and just like you would connect to a wireless headset or a s external speakers, you would see the Wahoo Fitness Scale show up or a heart rate monitor show up, and you, you have to pair with it. Then it's connected. Then you can discover and, and use it. On OS X, it's version of the client version of OS X. 10.7 and above, uh, iOS 5 and above, Android 4.3 and above. Okay, and that's for Bluetooth LE. So uh, those are the, the versions. So the answer is yes, it's available on supported operating systems of Delphi. Uh, the only making sure you have those versions of the operating system. The other thing is, for example, on a, if you have an older MacBook Pro, it may not have Bluetooth 4 support built in. And I have some older notebooks that don't have Bluetooth 4. So on my notebooks and for the Mac, if you have an older Mac, you can buy these little Bluetooth LE USB dongles. And they usually have a Broadcom chip inside of them that does Bluetooth LE. And then it turns your device uh, into a Bluetooth LE device. And I have that on one of my other notebooks uh, that doesn't support Bluetooth LE. Jim, for example, has a tablet, has a Windows tablet. I think it was running Windows 8, wasn't it, Jim? And that had Bluetooth LE built because it's a tablet built into the hardware. Right, yeah, it was a Windows 8 tablet originally, one of those little mini Dell tablets. Yep. And you can test. There's an app I found on the Macintosh side. Um, you just search in Google for MacBook Pro Bluetooth LE, and there's a code that, uh, that it'll display when you dump out about your Macintosh that'll tell you whether, you whether your MacBook Pro hardware has Bluetooth LE support included. If not, you can buy one of those USB dongles again. So the answer is yes, you have the right hardware, software, and I'll put in. We don't list the hardware. Um, I'll answer that one. And then if you just Google search for Bluetooth LE USB uh, dongle, something like that, uh, I bought one at Amazon for uh, 10 bucks or so. Um, but there's a bunch of them, these little, uh, these little Bluetooth uh, here. I'll just put one. I'm not a person to tell you where to buy things from, but uh, I'll put a link to at least one of them, which is a uh, Bluetooth 4.0 USB micro adapter, uh, these little dongle things that you can, that one was uh, $13.95 for the link that I put in. So so the answer is yes for Delphi and C++ Builder, uh, if you have the right operating system and if you have the right hardware. Hopefully that answers your question, Peter, in general. Um, yeah. But some of the newer notebooks and computers are coming. They've had Bluetooth Classic or Bluetooth 3 for some time now because uh, we use Bluetooth Classic to do app tethering. It's one of the options for doing app tethering to tether two computers together. Um, 